Hey everybody, this week we're heading back to that old trading post site again where we found those amazing artifacts. After we left there, we did some research and found there was a terrible massacre on this river behind me. So stay tuned, and this is what we found. In the ancient book of our county, a tragedy occurred on the gravel bar located near Ray Francis residence. The massacre that ensued was later written by Captain Sharp's surviving child that was on the boat and witnessed the events of that day. My father Andrew Sharp was a militia captain. He served under George Washington in the Revolutionary War. This county we lived in was a newer county, and there was no chance for schooling us children. After living there for 10 years, he was determined to have us schooled, so he swapped his place for Landon, Kentucky. We moved to the river and got into our boat. We started down the river in the evening. The water was low. We had to row night and day. We started the next day and got two miles below the falls on this river where we landed. My father had a canoe tied to the side of the boat. It got lost going over the falls. He went back for it. While he was gone, a man came and said that the Indians were coming. When father got back, the women and children were in the boat. Several Indians fired. They were hidden behind a tree about 15 steps off the river bank. The first fire, they shot father's right eyebrow off. When he was cutting one end of the boat loose, he was wounded on the left side. When he was cutting the other end loose, they shot him through the other side. Father got the boat away before they could get in. He saw an Indian among the trees. Mother gave him his gun and he shot the Indian dead. The boat got in a whirlpool and went round and around for a while. When the open side went towards land, they shot in at us. They followed us 12 miles down the river. There were two dead and two wounded on the boat. We got within nine miles of Pittsburgh by daylight. Father lived 40 days after he was wounded. Many times I covered up and wept as I heard his moans while his wounds were being dressed. He got better and could sit up and talk to people. The firing of the cannon on 4th of July caused the wound in his back to run. The doctors objected to the cannonading. He died the 8th day of July in the year 1794. The site we discovered was very likely a camp of Indians that watched Captain Sharp and his family drift by in a large flatboat over 200 years ago. It's quite possible the massacre that ensued was launched from the very spot we dig today. All right, everybody, uh, I got my first signal in the hole at this old historic site. I'm gonna turn you around and show you what it is. It sounded terrible in the hole. When I got it out, it was a strong 80. It appears to be copper and it might be a pendant of some kind. So let me turn you around, show you what it is. I might need your help on this. Again, this is a very early site and who knows, it could have been a great item during the fur, fur trading days, so. Okay, so way down at the bottom of this hole, I popped this out. Now, originally I didn't think it was anything to be, you know, too worked up about, but it's got this little thing at the top, which kind of makes it look like it would have been a pendant of some kind. Um, I don't see any threads or anything on it. I don't know what would have, they would have put inside of there. Kind of maybe a coin, maybe, who knows. Uh, but this is very interesting. You guys know what that is, comment below. But I'm so excited to be back at this site, as you guys can remember. We pushed a lot of stuff in here. And we wanted to get back to this spot because, I don't know if you see this stuff coming up. This stuff is this stuff and it gets to be about 10 foot tall and we wouldn't be able to swing in here at all uh, probably another month so when to get back to the site and we're back so let's see what we can find okay i got a nice strong 54 signal right here it is out of the hole i haven't looked for it yet so we're going to try to find it together 54 maybe a button a cool relic of some kind with a history here who knows so it's going to be in here somewhere let's see if we can <gasps> set something there what is that? Let's see if it... That's it. Let's see. Hmm. Definitely feels heavy. It's a piece of lead, I do believe. Melted lead at these old sites are actually pretty common. He may have been sitting around the campfire. Maybe some Indians that are making round balls. Or an old French fur trader making round balls. And uh, this would have been spillage off the top of the mold. 
maybe into the fire or something. Oh boy, me and Sean made a mistake. <laughs> so I got a signal right on top of the ground. So the last time we were here, we popped it out. We must have missed the target, but it, it's right here. It's round and it's green. I don't know what it is. So turn you around. Let's look at it together. It might be something pretty important. Could date back who knows when. Okay, so I was coming across the surface here. I got a strong 86. Now, that was not looked at. We probably popped it out of the hole. Let's clean this off and see what we missed the last time we were here. I don't want to rub it too much. You can see the edge of it's falling apart right there. A lot of really early buttons will do that. This is like stuck to it back here. That's weird. All right, let me do some surgery here and see if I can clean up this backside. There it is. I did, this is a big piece of iron that was stuck to it and I pried it off and you can see when I broke it off, you can see the gold gilt that was on the button. I can't see anything on the front. Uh, I'll clean up, clean it up a little bit more at home. Maybe we can get something off of it. But that's pretty cool. Something we missed. So let's keep going. All right, we did it. Uh, up here in the iron, the cellar hole is right over there. Uh, we found all those Kaskaskian points back here behind me, uh, down in there and over to my right. But I got a coin in the hole. Let's turn you around and show you what it is. So I got a, a signal here and it sounded good, but man, there's a lot of iron. I pulled about five or six square nails out of this hole. And I plopped it right to there. It looks like it's going to be a small scent. And it is a fatty. Fatty Indian heads run up until uh, 1864, I think think okay man this is one's gonna be pretty toasty if this is even uh a flying eagle i just dug one the other day i do think i see a shield there so um boy this is gonna be toasty so it's gonna flip like this oh yep there's an indian so let's uh, clean her up and get a date for you what's your guesses all right so there it is i do believe it's an 18 6 what do you guys see a three two i'm not positive um i'll have to clean it up a little bit more here but it's going to be early 1860s you can tell by the thickness of the coin that we call these fatty indians just because uh these coins in the early 1860s uh were fatter they were thicker than um the ones that came after them and they had a high nickel content so they oftentimes will ring up lower on the vdi we got a great great indian head penny here early and let's keep going i'm excited <laughs> yes all right everybody because this site's so historical um i wanted to show you every single find that i find now this is a big piece of brass but it's got a big piece of iron attached to it which made it a little scratchy to here in the hole it come out of the ground like that so the iron would have been above the brass which you know does make it a little harder to hear but um yeah there you go it's a uh some kind of i believe maybe part of a, an old lamp it's all brass on this side you can see where the old uh, iron nails would have came through there or whatever that was it's a little decorative on this side there is no writing on it that i can see could be something very interesting could just be a piece of a lamp so all right you had another iffy signal here and i popped it out something small in the 40s 47 is what it come out at now i don't know what it is it sounds non-ferrous so let's find it together i haven't looked for it yet it sounds awful small. Oh boy, really small. What the heck? Hmm, interesting. All right, let's turn the sensitivity up a little bit. Oh, got something here. Well, there it is, right there. It's a, just a little piece of melted lead, I do believe. Uh, yeah, that's it. Hmm. Let's see if there's anything on it. And there is not. Just another piece of melted lead by the old campfire, probably. All right, let's go. Oh, boy. So I just dug that piece of lead right here, and I had another scratchy tone there. I'm like, I'm going to dig it. And it's an 86. It cleaned up when I flipped it out of the hole. I haven't found it yet. So let's go ahead and see if we can find it together here. Okay. Oh, maybe that's it there. No, that's a piece of bark. Okay, it's over here. What is that? What is that? Definitely what it, what I was hearing. It'd been nice if it was a piece of another 
pedal point. That one I'm not sure of. I would have had two pieces there and there that you can see there's holes that come through. Hmm, it's got like a uh, different kind of a shape to it. I don't see any writing. Definitely a crude piece of something. So, all right, let's keep going. It's non ferrous. That's exciting. Another tone we missed. All right, another good tone right here. Um, this was masked by. There's a lot of these big chunks of iron in the hole. Uh, I'm not sure what this stuff is. Uh, there's a lot of coke in there too, but big piece of brass. Now this could very easily have been, it's not a belt plate, is it? Um, I don't see anything on it. I don't see any attachment points, but this could very easily have been a piece of the uh, brass that they were using for those Kaskaskia points from, the, uh, from a couple of videos ago. Uh, they would have cut the old tea kettles down from the fur traders and uh, rolled them into uh, points and, and used them. So uh, that could have very well easily been a piece of trade brass that they used, um, that they used to trade the Indians. So the Indians would then take it, roll it into uh, the Kaskaskia points or maybe kettle points and um, use those that way. So that's awesome. Um, I mean, those Kaskaskia points come from right down, right down in there. So, very possible that's what that is. Let's keep going. All right, everybody, I got a signal here. And it's small, deep, and in the 90s. Now, this could be a piece of brass. It could be silver. It could be a large scent. It's hard to say. But I'm going to live dig this one with you guys. And hopefully, it turns out to be something good. So, let's go ahead and live dig this together. It is a little scratchy. It could be piece of iron but I think it's, it's repeating in all directions all right, let's flip it over together all right it's a lot clearer now it's hitting 87 though so it may not be as high as what I wanted it to be. It might not be silver. It's still very deep. Oh, maybe not. Oh, right there it is. Yes. It's a large scent. How in the world is on edge? It was like right there. How in the world did we miss that? Look at that. Okay, can we get anything off of it? Okay, I can see her right there. She's looking to the left. All right, what year is it going to be? This one actually might turn out to be pretty decent. Got some corrosion up here on the right-hand side. The year is going to be right here. So let's just flip it this way. Uh, one C. That's not a U, is it? C. I mean, I'm assuming it's C-E-N-T. Uh, for those who don't know, some of these large scents would have a U instead of a E on the back. Uh, they used to use them as old broth and brothel tokens. Uh, but that one, I'll have to double check, but looks like the E is missing. But anyways, uh, let's get a year off this, guys. All right, well, there she is. I do not have a date. It's completely wiped. Uh, maybe if it dries out a little bit more, I can probably maybe get the high areas to show up with a little bit of nose grease. But... Uh, I believe that's an earlier one. C E, let's see, is it an E? And not a, yes, C E N T scent. Pretty cool. <laughs> I can't believe we missed that. I told Sean, I said, I'm going to go back to that site and go real, real slow. Awesome. We just dug that large scent. This isn't very far away. out to solid 50 now so let's go ahead and see what it is together here oh. Got it there. Yep, that's it there that is a piece of lead hmm it actually looked like it was rolled 
That's interesting. So, this little piece of lead. Let's keep going. All right, another little cool signal here. Popped it out of the hole. Right there it is. A uh, little buckshot lead ball. Too small to be a pistol ball. No doubt it dates to the early 1800s. Um, due to the site being as old as it is. All right, I got another good find in the hole. Every time that I've dug up to this point has, has been a very iffy signal. Uh, almost barely diggable because there's so much iron in the ground. Now, this was like a 20, 30, wasn't hitting both ways. I flipped it out and it jumped up to like 70. So pretty cool. Let me turn you around and show you what it is. Out of that hole there, popped it out. There it is. I thought it was like a rifle casing, but check it out. It's a very small, maybe a child's thimble. I'm gonna clean it up here a little bit and come right back. Man, what is that's the smallest thimble I think I've ever found. I'm not sure how anybody would have got it on their finger. It's not precious metal, it's not silver or anything like that. It's just a little copper thimble. It's actually starting to fall apart down to base. Very, very old. What a great relic that is. So it's been a while since I filmed something here. Uh, Worked over to the other side where I found my kettle point, my Kaskaskia point, and I got a, a deep target here. Popped it out of the hole. It's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if that's what it is, but uh, we'll speculate here. Hold on. Way down to the bottom of that hole, I popped out this piece of copper now. Um, the Indian artifact guy seems to think this is possibly a, a barrel strap copper, um, and sometimes I guess they would use those to uh, make their kettle points. So this is definitely could be a uh, piece of copper uh, that they would have used to make their kettle point out of. There's no design or anything on it. There is a little ridge here on the top top end of it. But uh, yeah, it's interesting to think that that's possibly material that they used to make them. All right, I think I got another one, everybody. <laughs> uh, the shape is a little off, but uh, I found my kettle point in, la in a couple weeks ago right over there. And I got a another shaped one in a hole. This one's different than the other three. But uh, it could be a kettle point here. Let me turn you around. Way down there in the bottom of that hole, I popped out that. So, I don't know if the tip's busted off. It looks like it's broke. It does appear to be a triangular shape. This isn't a straight edge here. There is a little bit of a uh, angle to it. But I just wonder, I mean, that's brass. I can't even bend it, I don't think. Yeah, so. That is definitely sturdy enough to be one. I wish I would have had a hole in it so I can confirm it, but uh, there we are. This could be potentially another kettle point from this old site here. Look at this. Man, what a great spot. All right. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this week. And if you guys like our videos, make sure you like and subscribe and check out some of our other videos here. We'll see you next week.